Welcome back to another edition of Components Breakdown. Today we're going to bring you one of my favorite games, and that is Founding Fathers. Founding Fathers is a 3-5 player game. It takes about 90 minutes to complete. It was designed by the same gentleman that made 1960, and one of the designers also was intricately involved in the making of Twilight Struggle. So those familiar with those games are going to know that this also has a battle-driven card system that is used to run the game engine. There's some other mechanics that are also used, such as some light hand management, some set collection. At heart, though, Founding Fathers is really a simulation of the writing of the Articles of the United States Constitution, in which each of the players is going to take on the role of one of the delegates and either trying to pass certain articles um, or not pass certain articles. There is a victory point system that is used in the game, um, and I will explain all these points and the contents, so let's move forward and take a look inside the box. The first item of notice is the rule book. It is a 20 page full color rule book from front to back. There are some very nice um, illustrations and descriptions in here and examples of all the gameplay elements. It's a very easy game to learn and to teach, um, which really steps up its playability from games like 1960 and Twilight Struggle. Also, the other half of it is used for historical references. Um, for those people that are interested in American history, you can see that the developers spent a lot of time making sure that they really made a game that was authentic and true to that time period. There is a large fold-out map or game board, and we'll get to that in just a moment. There are several markers for each of the delegates that the players will be playing. The insert is actually reversed. On the other side it's just a white nondescript insert. I've had to flip it to make sure that all my cards and items fit back into the box. There are 12 articles that ship with the game. These are on nice thick cardboard. One side is a what-if scenario and the other side is the actual historical article that was passed. And we'll get into the reasons on why they made them two-sided. In one of the Plano boxes, I have all of the faction markers. There's four markers for each faction, and they are small state, large state, anti-federalist, and federalist. And then there's several yay-nay markers that you'll be placing upon the board. There's all the influence markers, which fit nicely in this Plano box. And there's five different players, so five different colors. And also on the backhand side, I have your scoring markers for each of the players. And the last thing are the cards. Um, the cards are a little bit thin, as you can see there. They're very pliable. They should probably be sleeved if you're going to be playing this for a long extended period of time. Um, I've played this game numerous times, and this is a brand new copy, so I haven't had a chance to go through it and do all those um, actions yet. So, let's actually set up a game and give you an idea how the gameplay works. We're going to go through the components very briefly um, so that when I start explaining the gameplay, everyone's going to have a better understanding of what the items and components in front of them are capable of doing from one turn to the next. We'll start off with the game board, and the game board is broken into several different sections. We'll start in the upper right hand corner, and this is called the assembly room. Within the assembly room, you're going to have three different areas. The top, which houses the current article that is up for vote and a left side and a right side, or here you see a top and a bottom. Um, the top area is the nay votes and there's six tables and the bottom is the yay votes and there are seven tables. To get a article passed you have to actually have either seven in one area or six in the other. Now these can be tracked easily on this scoring track down here which houses all of the different states or colonies at the time and you simply place these yay nay vote, uh, vote markers on them to signify if a specific state has voted for or against that article that is currently in the assembly room. This is just a nice at a glance track so everybody can look at it without having to refer back to all the cards that have been placed in the assembly room. Right below that is the outdoor area that houses the current cards that the player can pick up at the end of their turn. There's a staircase that is used for the scoring track with the Liberty Bell at the very top. All the articles that have not been passed are simply placed on this area. There is a debate room or a debate track which has a numbering system from 1 to 7. Within each of these debate areas there are different factions. The large, small, anti-federalist and federalist track. These are used as scoring tokens at the end of the game so they're valuable to have um, 
throughout the game. And the last area on the board is the committee room. All the people that are all the influence markers that were on the losing side of the assembly room vote go into here and we'll explain that in just a moment but there is a second article that is up for a vote um, during that turn. Now each player is going to start off with one of their crib sheets three of their influence markers of which there's a total of eight for each player the other five are simply placed off to the side of the board and those can be earned as the game moves forward and each player is going to start off with their own delegate card and the delegate cards are broken down as such. At the very top they have a name in the center, they have the state upon which um, they are a part of. All of the planners are starting delegates to have a pen icon. Now, all the other ones will either be part of a large state, small state, anti-federalist, or federalist um, faction. And at the bottom is the event that can be used for that specific character. There are 55 of these delegate cards in the deck. Um, and as you notice, all of them have different texts at the bottom and different factions in different states. So with that, now you have an idea of all the components. Let's actually start explaining the gameplay and show you how they fit into the game. The objective of Founding Fathers is to have the most points at the end of the fourth round in which all the articles have been voted upon. Um, to do that, there's quite a different ways uh, to acquire points. Voting on articles, winning debate tracks, winning committee rooms, and using the events of your cards. Um, when the game first starts off, there are four articles which are simply placed off to the upper right hand corner of the board. Um, these represent the articles that were already written going into the Constitutional Congress when they signed the articles. And it's called the Virginia Plan. So the game always starts off with four articles that are pre-written. The two articles that are placed in, um, onto the board uh, one goes into the assembly room and one goes into the committee room. These always start off on the historical side. Now looking at the articles, you're going to notice that they're two-sided. One is historical and one is not historical And the reason um, you know it's not historical is because it has that border around it. Now each of the articles has a specific faction on them. And you will be voting on these factions depending upon the cards that you have in your hand and the debate track stuff that you're wanting to progress on. So let's start off with the game. Each player is going to start with one of the uh, different delegates, as we said before. They're going to start with three of their eight influence tokens, and they're going to start off with their planner. Also at the beginning of the game, each player is going to draw four cards upon which they're going to take two into their hand and discard the other two. This is going to make up their caucus. And every turn they're going to always have three cards in their hand unless there is an event that allows them to carry a fourth. During their turn, they're allowed to do four different actions. The first is they can vote on the article. They look at the article and see that it is a big state article. And you either have to vote, um, if you have big state cards in your hand, you have to vote for or a yay vote for that. If you have a small state, you have to vote the opposite. If you have the pin or your starting delegate, that is a wild card and they can vote for anything. So the first thing you could do is you can decide how many delegates you wish to use to vote for that article. And you look at the state that they're on. So you could say, I'm going to commit one of my Connecticut gentlemen to vote nay on the article. You simply place them on there. You can use one of your influence markers if you so wish, and that is used for scoring points. And then you simply take the token, look at the state you voted, which was Connecticut, and say, I voted nay on Connecticut. And that is what you've done for your turn, and you draw back up from the pile down here as one of your cards. Now, it's always a good idea to look at the cards that are down here and try to pick cards that either have not voted or maybe factions that you're trying to gather. So that's item one that you can do in your turn. Item two you can do is you can speak in the debates. Instead of putting your card there, you can decide that you want to get points at the end of the game for the debate track. So you can discard as many cards as you want to move your debate track up. So if you have two small states, you can discard both of them, both of your small states, and place your influence marker on the two spot since you discarded two cards. That is resol resolved at the end of the complete round in which each, each player is going to take a turn. The third action you can do is you can enact an event upon your card. So you can look at one of your cards and read the event and then do that action if you so wish. Now every single um, one of the 55 cards has an action upon which they can use. And the last thing you can do is you can snub your, um, your delegates. If there are delegates you don't like in your hand, you can discard one, two, or all three of them and draw a new hand. 
So those are your actions you can do every turn. As the game progresses, um, you're going to be filling up these areas and trying to either pass or not pass a specific article. Once an article passes or does not pass, you get points for that, depending upon the influence markers that you have in that area and how many of the candidates you have. Um, and I'm not going to go into the points too much, but if you vote for articles and you have the right states that match the right article, you get more points. If you vote against them and they have opposite, um, you're going to get points as well. So at the end of the round, everybody that voted on the losing side is going to go with their influence markers into the committee room. The person that has the most people in the committee room or from the losing side will also get to pass this article. And they'll get to decide if they want it to be on the small state or on the large state side. The people that have fewer committee people in here are going to have to keep their influence markers in there. So it's kind of a negative drawback to trying to win a side and then losing it in the assembly room. And hopefully I'm explaining this as best I can because there's a lot of little nuances to the game. Um, at the end of the round, also the person that has the highest marker in a specific area is going to take that token for the round. Remember there are four tokens for all four rounds, so only one person is going to win one of these tokens each round. This is used for in-game scoring. Now how does the in-game scoring work? Looking over here, you're going to find out which articles have been passed. Every round, new articles will pass, and they'll either go to the historical side or to the non-historical side. At the end of the game, the faction that has the most amount of passed articles, in this case, if the game ended now, which it wouldn't, um, it'd be large state. Um, so the person that has large state tokens on their side would get points, depending upon how many of these tokens they had. And then it would go down from there. So the second place could be small state or anti-federalist or federalist. So there's going to be some in-game scoring that happens from the past articles um, in both the assembly room and the committee room. Also, there's scoring that takes place from cards that you play, um, events that you enact, uh, and some other items throughout the game. Now, I didn't go into a whole lot of detail because basically the game is really easy to play. It, it's extremely easy to play. And I want to get into some of my final thoughts in the game, and they're this. This is my this is my favorite game by these designers for a couple reasons. Number one, it plays a lot quicker than a 1960 and a Twilight Struggle. The amount of cards allow you to really understand the delegates a little bit better. With only 55 cards in the deck, you're going through the cards quicker, you're understanding who represents each state, and it just feels like the theme meshes more than what the other two games um, are. Also, it's multiplayer, which is a huge boost um, for me, where I don't want to sit down and play a two-hour Twilight Struggle game or three-hour Twilight Struggle with one player. I'd rather play a nice three- or four-player game, and this allows you the opportunity to play three to five. I really do think it plays best with three. Four is, is good as well. Five tends to be too many because articles get passed too quickly, and doesn't really feel like you have too much control over the game, but three, article, three players is, is perfect. Um, as I said, this is this is probably my favorite card-driven game out there, if, if not one of my favorite games, period. It's extremely easy to play, it's extremely easy to learn, it's highly replayable. There are a lot of different strategies. You can try to win your points in the assembly room, you can try to win your points with events, you can try to win your points with the debate track, and you can even try to win points with the committee room. A lot of options, a lot of good choices, a lot of strategy in the game. Pick it up. This is Founding Fathers, and I cannot recommend it high enough.